In today's video, we are gonna find out what an American V-twin motorcyclist, that's me, thinks of the 2018 Yamaha Star Venture. Now there's lots of reviews online about this motorcycle and many others and let me start before we go any further with a full disclosure. Transparency when you're doing stuff like this, when you're reviewing motorcycles is everything. You have guys who will do a review on a motorcycle, tell you they don't receive any type of lodging, any type of travel, any type of motorcycles, parts, anything from anybody as if they purchased the motorcycle themselves, took it out, did a review and then maybe tried to resell it on the market. Not full transparency, there's more to it than what you're telling everybody. For myself, I like to keep things clear and honest, and today's bike was given to me by Nash Power Sports. They're simply letting me ride it for a demo so I can do this review for you all. Uh, they hold all kinds of motorcycles. They've got many other bikes in their showroom I would love to review and ride, but for now, we're gonna take a look at this Yamaha. It's a Japanese V-twin touring motorcycle. Okay, before we get on and actually ride this thing for the first time, we are going to go ahead and take a look at just the appearance. Nothing more, nothing less. The style of this motorcycle is pretty sweet. I'm actually digging it. I gotta say, it doesn't look too outrageous, but it's certainly not a traditional style as well. I see we've got LED blinkers up in the mirrors. We've got a pretty aggressive front headlight scheme, I really enjoy it. Reminds me of kind of like a Chevy Camaro's front end, to be honest with you. We've got some scoops in the front lower fairing, and it looks like we've got some uh, spotlights there on the bottom, which is always nice if you're doing some big touring. Dual disc brakes, the rim's okay. I feel like the rest of the bike is designed a little bit more stylish than the rim for my taste. But, uh, you know, teach their own. Seats, passenger front, trunk, lots of compartments. And we will get in to all the details and the features of this motorcycle after I take it for a test ride. Before we go any further, I also would like to give a quick disclaimer. This is nothing but my opinions. I am not a Bill Nye the Science Guy gonna break down the air pressure and all the intricacies of this. That is not what I am. I am a motorcyclist. I spend more time in the saddle than I do in the studio coming up with clever facts and stuff to throw at you. So if that's the type of review you're looking for, I'm sorry guys, that isn't gonna be it. This is just going to be an honest, heartfelt opinion from somebody who actually puts down real miles. So at first looks at this dash, it is quite different than what I'm used to seeing when it comes to American V-twin motorcycles and very much so what I would expect from a Japanese V-twin motorcycle. Dash is just a little bit more fancy than what I'm used to. The seat itself actually feels fairly comfortable. It does have what I'm noticing is some lower lumbar support um, and you know for me that's a big thing when you get a touring motorcycle you need that lower lumbar support you can travel without it but man it makes a long distance rides so much nicer okay let's start this thing up and listen to the sound it does have an american v-twin lope to it but it is quiet as also i would probably expect for a japanese touring motorcycle I think we stop talking about what's going on with this bike. Let me put down some miles. I'll come back and tell you what I think about the ride and about some of the features. a nice jaunt on this motorcycle through some great twisties through the city dealing with braking leaning balance I will say this is certainly a very capable long distance touring motorcycle I was actually rather impressed with the way it rides the suspension handled the bumps very well actually the suspension and the soft ride as I thought this lumbard seat actually makes a huge difference uh, giving you the support you need, uh, not only cornering, but just long distance. It's, it's just amazing what that lower support will do for you. I was impressed with the fact that even at 1,000 RPMs, this torquey, I believe 112 foot-pounds of torque, holds nicely. It'll pull you right through any corner, any low speed, low RPM situation. 
Another thing I have to say that I really like, when you are a long distance ride, and this is what you do, you spend the majority of your time on the motorcycle, you know some things really do make a difference. For one, the controls. The controls on this motorcycle are well built. They change depths and angles, so they're easy to find with gloves, without gloves. The different depths makes a big difference. That is something I absolutely love about this motorcycle. And to those of you that ride a lot, you know that's an important feature. All the hours you spend on a road motorcycle, you're gonna be staring at those gauges and controls. Another thing that I really enjoy is the adjustable windshield. Again, those of you that are putting down the long mile, this is going to make a big difference for you. Anybody that tells you these things don't matter, needs to ride more miles because it certainly does if you're just a day tripper or you're trailering your bike out and just riding for a little bit and then putting your bike back in the trailer and only riding in perfect weather and perfect conditions where you're not dealing with these bulky gloves or the struggles that mother nature often gives us then those features probably wouldn't be as important to you but giving this as a touring model i think i'm going to say those are pretty important features along with the storage capacity this trunk actually will fit two full-size helmets and gear on top of it, yeah. Big storage trunk. Definitely another important feature when it comes to a touring motorcycle. These wind deflectors, as insignificant as they may seem, absolutely another feature that when you're putting down big miles will make a difference for you hour after hour on that road. I was thoroughly impressed with the braking power of this motorcycle. It braked very well for such a heavy machine. I can only assume Yamaha took some of the technology from their sports bikes in developing the braking system for this motorcycle. Brakes very, very well. Things like locking saddlebags, power opening gas fill that locks, ports for communications, a touchscreen dash and navigation, a stereo system where you can actually hear the music while cruising down highway speeds, factory heated seat and handle grips, and plenty of compartment storage for front, here, and private passenger compartment storage. Again, are all features on a long road trip you're gonna appreciate because you can keep the things you wanna get accessible and not tucked away in the bag. Another very interesting feature is the fact that the music can be played separate from front to rear. That's right, the passenger can actually play their own playlist and radio station separate from yours up front. An actual emergency brake for when you are parked on slants like this, you can leave the bike in neutral and you know it's not gonna roll away. And this one's really something for me. I'm really not sure how comfortable I am with it, but I imagine for some of you it'd be really nice and that is the reverse button. This thing actually has a reverse gear. These are some of the features that I absolutely like and that I truly believe make this thing a capable touring V-twin motorcycle. I tend to be more of an American motorcycle guy, as you all know, but after riding hundreds of thousands of miles in a saddle, I can confidently tell you that they have done some of the features on here to make that trip just a little bit easier for you. Okay, let's uh, head back down to Nash's and let me tell you about the things I don't like about the motorcycle. And we are back at Nash Power Sports. Get him there, can you see him? Here in Phoenix, Arizona. Back at the showroom after the ride on the bike and uh, you know, all disclaimers uh, out there. Uh, like I said, I, you know, I haven't taken this thing across country. I took it on a nice ride where I could bring it up to highway speeds, where I could bring it into some good solid corners, some good braking, trail braking, things like that, just to see how it performs. And as I told you up top, it, it performed very, very well. It shifted smooth, uh, it was torquey, the suspension was great. But now comes the time to tell you the things that I don't really like. Some of the fitment, things like this little guy right here. I don't know if you can see that. It's in there. It's not coming out. It just wobbles a little bit. This is thin and just, it feels very plasticky. It's, it doesn't feel well made when it comes to these compartments. They feel like they could break fairly easily. Although from sitting in a desk chair saying something's thin and plastically may seem minuscule, but the reality is when you are four days in to a two week road trip and one of your compartments breaks and you lose <laughs> some of your gear that, that you like to keep that handy, well, it becomes kind of a big deal. Another thing I'm gonna talk about is the power plant. It is the 113, and of course it is a V-twin. It is, I guess, right around uh, 1900 cc's, and although very torquey, great at low RPMs, you can be at a, you can be at 1000 RPMs in corners and you feel stable, you don't feel like you're gonna dog the bike. Uh, the horsepower isn't as high as I would like to see at factory. The beautiful thing about this is these are easy things to build and fix. Y'all know I love to build the power plants. Another thing I'll say is the locking mechanism for the saddlebags. I don't really like this mechanism. It's a little awkward to push the button and get the saddlebag open. And then when open, I think it's a little bit smaller 
uh, storage space than what some of its competitors may have. I don't know why factory bikes always put these handlebars on there so low. I like my handlebars up a little bit higher, it gives me better posture. So the low handlebars is definitely something that I would want to get out of the way. The weight, it is a heavy motorcycle. Now, I will give it credit and say on the move, it is a very well balanced machine and the suspension and that balanced machine together make it an absolute breeze to ride. But on the low speed, moving it around the parking lot, backing it in and out, uh, moving it around, you might find some difficulty. I think the seat's low enough for a touring model. I'm 6'2", and it seemed nice and low. I believe it could be comfortable for somebody a little bit shorter than I am, no problem. But maneuvering that weight could truly be a problem, and I assume that's why they put the reverse gear on there. I don't have a lot of experience with reverse gears, so it made it uh, a little uncomfortable for myself. Again, with Fitment, the handle grips do feel a little bit cheap. They don't feel real good, not real fancy. They're very basic. And on a $25,000 motorcycle, Fitment is fairly important. Another thing is this kickstand. Kick that kickstand up, you gotta catch it right along this exhaust. And while that's not a big deal to me, because I don't mind a little scratch or melting on my pipes, to the guy who likes to keep his motorcycle pristine, that's gonna be a problem for you down the road. All in all, that's the 2018 Star Venture by Yamaha. I think it's a very capable machine. This review is nothing more than my opinions. I'm telling you, I am not a guy who spends all day figuring out what one pound of air difference in this motorcycle from the next with a five degree temperature difference is going to affect your braking. I just don't get that into the fine details. I'm more about getting on and riding it. I am just a guy who enjoys to ride sharing my experience on these motorcycles telling you what I think and doing so honestly. I'm not going to tell you that nobody helped me get on this motorcycle today, that I did it all on my own, or that nobody sends me products for review, or or that I have no relationship with any of the companies that I review. Uh, I do have a relationship now with Nash, and the fact that they let me use their motorcycle, and they were very kind to me, and I would love to come back and visit them some more. And there you have it. You find somebody saying that they are completely unbiased, and then you go on their website, and it's filled with products for sale, where they're in contracts with the companies to sell it, getting paid. Don't buy that bullshit. Stick with the riders, and they'll stick with you. I feel very blessed to be in the position that I am out here test riding these beautiful machines all around the country. It's a dream of mine, and it came true. And that's why I'd like to remind you, dream until your dreams come true.